Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Dr. Cami and Karen Go Keto, where Cami and I are transitioning to a ketogenic lifestyle. We've been doing this for a little bit now. We hit some obstacles, and Cami start. We started a discussion with Cami. This is part three of three of a binge, a two-day binge that she had the other day, and we are going to talk about like I think the stages of her binge. We kind of stopped there, so. Um, at least that's where I think we're at. And so I'll give it to Cami and let her fill us in. All right. Thanks, Karen. So good to see you and um, welcome everybody. Please subscribe and comment to our lovely channel where we're working on our keto lifestyle. So when I, I've noticed that when I start a binge right beforehand, right before it's going to happen, there's this few moments where I have a decision, like where I know that I'm about to do it. And I figure one of three things could happen. One, either I talk myself out of it and I just realize that I'm up to something bigger and that's not going to be extraordinary behavior. And that's what usually works most of the time. The majority of the time, I just can get myself out by drinking some water or calling a friend or um, praying or realizing I'm up to something bigger, something like that. The second thing that sometimes happens is that I go ahead and decide that I'm going to start the binge, but as I'm usually, because usually I'm driving somewhere to get food, right? Because I don't keep it in my house. So as I am in the process of starting the binge and I already have it in my mind that I'm going to do the off plan eating and planning what I'm going to eat and where I'm going to eat it and what I'm going to do after that and what I'm going to eat after that. If, you know, I'm still binging. Um, I, on the way there, I can stop myself, which I've only been able to do a couple of times. And I remember doing it and I called, um, usually I call Cindy and we had a discussion and I was able to get myself home. And once I get in my house, I'm pretty safe because there's not any off plan food here. The third thing that happens is that I just go on my binge and then I'm not reaching out or uh, doing anything proactive in stopping this binge from happening. And once it starts, it's very, very hard for me to stop. It's it's almost like it's going to have these different stages of the binge and it's going to go to the end. You know, like I've described it before, like you have a hangnail and you see it there and you don't have the clippers and you know, it's bothering the hell out of you. And you're just going to grab that thing and you're going to pull it and you're going to be done and move on with your life. You don't just kind of like start pulling it like a little or halfway, you know, a lot of times if you have clippers or whatever, you'll take care of it that way. But if you don't, you just rip it off and keep going in life. And that's how I feel my binges go. All right. So yesterday in part two, you kind of didn't want to discuss like being able to stop in the middle of it. And I know you've done it in the past and you just referred to it as a, a hangnail situation. Right. But you said. If you have clippers. You could just take the clippers. And and cut it instead of chewing it with your teeth. Right. OK, so. What are the clippers that you can have in a binge, right? That's a tool. A clipper is a tool to keep you from damaging your cuticles um, in a way that can really be bad for your for your fingers, right? So there are tools that yep. you could have in place that you could use. Um, but I think mindset is important. And if you have a mindset that says, oh, I can't stop this then you're not going to stop it. Or I can't stop this. Why should I look for some tools? So if you kind of consider, if you're lifting weights, like uh, free weights, if you take those weights and you like lift those weights up, you know you have to bring the weights down, right? You don't say to yourself, well, you know what? There's no way. I'm, I'm just going to stay right here, right? So if you consider this is your binge, then you got to bring it back down. I don't know if that makes sense, but it's like there is a point where, you know, you are able. The question is, what does it take for you to make yourself capable of stopping it? So uh, I did just find this. So after our conversation yesterday, I went online and I found 
um, some AI, and this AI is called inflection pi. So the word inflection, and then pi, P-I. And it's, it's a very clever little app, AI app, artificial intelligence app. And, you know, artificial intelligence is you tell the, what you're chatting to. This is a chat bot, basically. Uh, you tell it the background, right? So I was testing it with, hey, I'm looking at three donuts and I'm trying to stop a binge. And it came back with, well, don't do that. It's not healthy for you. And it was, you know, it was encouraging. And um, and I think I said, give me three reasons why I shouldn't do it. But the joy of doing something in AI in a chat is that it kind of is reflecting you, but it's also taking all the information from the inner, or not all the information, but inner, in, information from a large language model where it's somebody's fed it some information, right? So, it can say binging is not good for you, or do you really want to do that? And it's, they're not generally mean, but you can also say, look, I'm really having a hard time struggling. I need you to be forceful. Can you tell me three good reasons not to do this binge or three reasons not to eat these donuts? And it will come back and it will talk to you. And um, I don't know if you had a chance to look at it, but I'd like to have your input and see if anybody else out there, I think it's a good thing because Cami has said before that, um, well, I try to call, but, you know, some, sometimes people don't answer. And it's like, well, don't put it on somebody else for not answering the call. You know, if you created a system, the call itself, just, hey, just throwing out that SOS could be enough to stop the binge or at least to postpone it. So in this, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they're always going to be there. The, the, the AI is there. That's the joy of this is it's actually there to listen to you and it can talk. So you can choose a voice to talk to you. It can be a man or a woman, British man. I don't know if it was a British woman, but um, I chose a voice that sounded very much like my own voice. And I thought that was kind of interesting. So um, I recommend people try it out. I'm, I'm trying out a lot of different chat GPTs and it's just a lot of fun. Anyway, what do you have to say, Kimmy? Um, well, that sounds good. That's something that would be, you know, immediate. And when I'm in that part, when I'm in that second option of, you know, driving and trying to stop it in the meantime, I think that would be very helpful. Um, I think some, you know, it feels to me like it's a very chemical, re chemical issue when I've, you know, I know that you say the brain, you know, like your mental status and where you are in your brain and the decisions that you're making are really important, your mental state, right? But once I have the urge and the craving and I can't get it stopped and I've decided I'm going to binge, the majority of the time it will happen. Yeah, but you've just hit the nail on the head. You've said, I've decided to binge. So the question to me is, you've decided not to eat sugar. So why is that decision well, I guess less strong than the decision to eat sugar? Because of the chemical cravings. So, and I, and I get that there are chemical feelings in, in cravings, but if, you know, maybe there's a chemical way of stopping that, right? Maybe drinking something that, you know, immediately satisfies you, like maybe drinking a Diet Coke, right? My own kryptonite is Diet Coke, but I would say drinking a Diet Coke is probably better for you than eating two days worth of sugar, right? I mean, I think that and that's not a bad idea. That might actually work. And you can have the whole ritual, too. You know, you get the soda, you get the ice. You... I can go through the whole routine watching it on TV and you get to see the bubbles go down on the cup. Oh, my. I want one right now. But anyway, <laughs> you know, that could be enough of a mental uh, break to you know, to break you from just the chemical, because the chemicals are, you know, are fleeting in your body. It might be continuous, but well, continuous and fleeting, I guess, are contradictory. But, you know, it could be that it keeps hounding you. But if you have something to break the pattern, then the pattern is broken and you can move on and do something else other than eat the sugar. Right. Or it could be that I'm looking like for part of it, I think, is a dopamine rush. I'm looking for some dopamine and the Diet Coke um, scenario would satisfy that dopamine rush of doing something that's off plan, but something that doesn't justify a binge. 
Well, and plus there's something because when you say, so, but I think that that app could also help you because it's sort of like journaling, but it's right there in your phone, right? If you've got a journal and you've got this feeling coming on, you might not be in a place where you can pull over. Uh, well, I mean, you probably still pull over to get your app on your phone. But anyway, if you, you know, you're not going to pull over or maybe you don't even have your journal with you, right? Mm-hmm. And they have to find mm-hmm. a piece of paper and a pencil. Or like you said, you call somebody and then they don't answer. So now you're you're two strikes for three. So you could just go first to the app and just go, you know what, let me go talk to the, let me go talk to the, you know, the Cammy's alter ego about this binge and tell it what I'm planning on buying. And, and it's interesting too, because, you know, you have other parameters in your life that I happen to know about as far as like having a budget and you don't have a budget for junk food, but when you have a binge, you don't care about the budget. Right. It's like, right. Oh, um, I don't care. It's going. So it could the be. Sugar is surprisingly cheap, generally. Well, but cheap doesn't mean free, right? No, budget doesn't. budget doesn't mean cheap. I mean, you could have a budget, but you don't, you know, it's, you still may say, oh, yeah, it, it doesn't matter how free or how cheap it is. It's not in the budget. Just like the whole thing about the, the you know, the sugar not being in your food plan. Right. So I'm just saying is in two pla- in two places, you're kind of going off of plans that you have. You know, you're you're um, breaking your word as far as what you're up to. So yeah. that's a good way of talking to the app. Right. It could just say, you know, hey, I have a commitment that I don't eat sugar, but I really have a sugar craving right now. What can you do? to help me not to have the sugar craving and it'll come back and tell you something. You know, I also have a thing that says I don't spend money on junk food. What do you think about that? And it'll go tell it, you know, tell you to spend your money on something better. That's a great idea. And you know, that's how apps work. That's how AI chat bots work, right? You give them the background information so that it can come back with the answer that you need. Um, All right. Well, maybe next time we can get it on the computer, we can we can actually do a taping asking yeah. it some questions. I think that would be interesting. Yeah. And, you know, it is more, you know, it's right there. It's not going to not answer you. Right. You just have to have a charged phone. So in order to use it, and I'm guessing, right. you know, you can talk to it. So I'm guessing even in your if you were driving, you could even figure out a way to say open open an inflection pie and you know you could maybe get to it that way or at least you could pull over by the time you go to 7-eleven and and you know talk to it there or to mcdonald's to get the diet coke instead yeah i don't know i might and going to diet to 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 mcdonald's for a diet coke um may not be so bad because you know the other thing is you also you know i know i don't think that you want to start adding diet coke into your into your life but if it works Correct. better than sugar then that would be that would be fine but you could order two drinks right you could say i want a large diet coke and a large iced tea don't do that unless you're getting it as a deal on the app because i have the app and you get two drinks for a dollar each um so it, i always get my iced tea for a dollar each um but then you can switch right you can get the, the satisfaction of having the soda and then switch to the to the iced tea when you've gotten over the hump. But what it, what's interesting is your binge, Cami. You didn't buy one Celsius. You bought two. Well, I actually bought three because I went to buy two, and for the same price of two, you could get three. Yeah, and what did you do with the last one? I drank it the next day. And do those have calories or no? They have artificial sweetener in it. So technically, no, but they're sweet. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why and I'm not sure. Also. Yeah. I'm not sure if adding the doctor, the Diet Coke is a solution, but it could be a temporary solution. Yeah. Okay. Well, these are great ideas. We'll have to check them out. And, you know, hopefully we're not discussing this for a good long time. I just keep feeling like one of these days we're going to be saying, I remember when we used to have to talk about Cammy's binges. I know, (laughs) you know, that will be a thing of the past. And I'll be thinking, you know, just like now, how we, how we used to talk about how I couldn't, I would never be able to eat blueberries or I would never be able to fast for 24 hours or, you know, things that I've been able to overcome. So we're looking forward for that to happen someday. 
We are, just like my chocolate malts that I don't have anymore. <laughs> Amen. Amen, sister. <laughs> All right. Uh, and by the way, there is a downside to drinking Diet Coke because, look, it can kill you or at least maim you. That's how I hurt my hand. Falling in the movie theaters, I was going to get a refill on my Diet Coke. <laughs> yeah, see, that wouldn't have happened. <laughs> All right, everybody. Take care. All right, guys. Take care. See you guys at the next one. Bye. Bye.